David says he's got something. What is this thing? What is it? What is it? He's got something here. Let's see what he's got now. Oh, oh! Saw that? Yeah, I saw that. Man. Ah, just lost a nice black rockfish. David right there fishing a two ounce weight with a nuclear chicken swim bait. I think that's what it's called. Now, I personally have two goals today again. The first one, like any trip, man, you gotta come out here with high expectations. I'm catching a PB today. 10 pound, 15 pound lingcod, vermilion, cabazon, something huge. And to see it, I got this underwater camera, six inch swim bait, one and a half ounces of weight. Next up, we're gonna cook something new today. We're gonna fillet the fish, lemongrass, ginger, garlic, shallots, simmer, everything. And then we're gonna wrap the fish in a banana leaf, sprinkle the oil infused with all these seasonings in there, and then cook it over charcoal. So that's the plan, but goal number one, catch a PB, PB today, huge one. 10 pounder, 15 pounder. Tell me this does not look amazing right here. I mean, there's some waves here, but not that much. But out here, man, it's deep as heck right here. So there's some big fish. Cast out, it's probably 30 to 40 feet. Big lingcod, big vermilion like that deep water. Let's see what's under there. All right, baby. It's going down, man. PB, here we come, let's see. And what I'm doing is casting out, letting it sink to the bottom, all the way down to the very bottom. And then I'm bouncing it along, swimming it near the bottom and about 10 feet up. It feels to me like there's a huge ledge right here and it drops about 30 feet right after it. So the best way to get this bait down all the way, cast it out and leave your bail open. That way it can sink down straight rather than closing it and having it pull towards you, swinging towards you. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine. Man, almost literally almost thirty seconds for this thing to hit bottom. Life is good, y'all. Life is good. As long as you're alive and you got tomorrow, life is good. It's even better. Oh, I'm about to say, even better when you get a big fish. Oh, man, I want to feel that thump again. Come on, a big one this time, baby. Let's go. Come on, baby. I like to be nice and gentle with it like this, you know? Like, barely grasp it in your palm. Just nice and relaxed giving it some nice working, working it just like that. Nice and natural, just going with the flow. And then boom, you might get hit. It's just gonna hypnotize whatever fish is looking at it. Oh man, that felt fishy as heck. Whoa. What was that? Let's check it out. Did my swim bait get bit? Dang, I think I had one. I mean, you could tell right here on the swim bait, it's all tore up and I had to bite off the end because it's just so messed up. So I got to change this one out and try something new. Even my hook got messed up a little bit. So I got to change the hook out too. It's not so sharp anymore. Got hit on the rocks. Always keep on top of your gear or else you're going to lose the big one. It's like straight out of a movie. Looks like a toy, like a kid's bug toy. Ah, yeah, put your finger up. Sharp as ever. Let him grab onto you. Oh, wow. Whoa. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. All right, y'all, here we go. One and a half ounce weight, seven inch swim bait made by the Masturbator. Man, I feel like I had a bite over here, so I gotta keep going for it, man. Gotta keep going for it. I mean, only makes sense, right? Just go for where you have some action. One and a half ounce weight. Woo! All right, there's bottom. Now I gotta be extra careful because this is a non-weedless hook. It's just a jig head. All I need is one fish to bite it. Okay, careful, careful. If you wanna get snagged like that, you gotta pop it off real quick one time. Don't let it linger down there or else the current and stuff, it's gonna get it stuck in a rock. 
And every once in a while, you're going over a rock and it might drop down 15 feet. So you gotta let it sink again until you feel the bottom. Still sinking, still sinking. And if you don't know if it hit bottom or not, give it a little twitch. If you give it a little twitch, then you'll feel it hit bottom. You have to stay in contact with your line. That's the only way that you can know that you're feeling bottom. So when I reel up to jig it, I start reeling before I even bring my rod down. Because if you bring it down first and then you reel, you got a bunch of slack in your line and then you won't be able to feel a bite, you won't be able to feel bottom, you won't be able to feel anything. If you ever feel your swim bait or jig head get stuck on a rock, you gotta get it out of there quick. Don't give it any time to get stuck. Yeah, that's why you gotta stay in contact with it all the time. Yeah, David just hooked up on a huge fish right here. Let's see what he got, let's see what he got. Looks like a beast. This is, looks like a big fish right here, y'all. Trying to horse it in because he doesn't want to get it snagged on the rocks, but that looks like a big fish. Woo, that's a big lingcod. That's the 10 pounder I was looking for. Damn, man. Nice. That's awesome. Awesome. Nice blue one, too. It is. Looks like we're keeping them. He's oh, already bleeding out, dude. Yeah. The nuclear chicken. The nuke chicks, baby. Berkeley Gulp. Two ounce. These guys are a powerhouse. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Looks like about two. Two ounce, yeah. Still, yeah, she's still alive. Look at that. That's awesome, man. All right, man, I need one of those. I need one of those 10 pounders. There's gotta be one out here. Oh no, got snagged. I gotta go back to weedless, man. Not working out for me here. Damn it. Oh, man. Man, I'm not catching any fish, so maybe you guys can buy a hat. These are for sale at firstshermanslife.net. New design. Finally got them in stock. Thank you. Anyway, going to the bobber rig now. Feeling it. Got the underwater camera. And I'm just going bait. Big piece of squid. Imagine that dangling right there. 20 feet deep. All right, getting desperate now. Let's do this. Getting bites. It's probably blacks right there. That's where you caught your black. There's something biting it. Well, now that I know what's going on with the underwater camera, next time I use the bobber rig, I'm gonna use smaller bait, smaller hooks, and I could probably use two hooks under the bobber. That should get them, no doubt about it. Something biting it. It was a small little like nibble, like probably a black or something. You know, every time I fish this bobber rig or fish a new rig, there's always something to learn, especially if you have an underwater camera. So you come out here, something's not working, something's working, make a modification for next time. Man, I'm trying everything, y'all. Trying the bobber rig right now. I've been trying this for about an hour. Next, I'm going to try to fish this area with a swim bait, but a light one. Maybe a three-quarter ounce swim, uh, jig head and just fish this whole area. Looks pretty deep and there could be some fish in here. Who knows, man? Who knows? Honestly, it's more satisfying catching a fish with a light jig head. It's just like the finesse, you know? Like working the bottom real slow, like feeling everything, and then just feeling that bite come out of nowhere. There's a fish. Yeah, maybe finally got one. Probably a black or a blue or something. Something small. Blue rockfish on top. <laughs> oh man. A little black, a little black rockfish. That's probably where the school is. 
Ah, tempting. I'll, I'll keep him. I'll throw him in the in the live well. Man, nah, he's too small. He's so small. We'll release him. We'll catch another one. First fish, though. Get out of here. All right, because there's all the blacks and blues right here, I'm not going to bury the tip of this swim bait. I'm going to leave it exposed. Any bites should be an easy hook set. Little black again. And yeah, that one's not bad. We'll keep this one. That's an eater. Pretty easy hook set on this guy. Just kept just kept on reeling and he got hooked. But that's a decent sized black. We're gonna throw him in the pool. Feels good to catch something. Going for the PB, but hey, this will do for a meal. What about right here? You think this will be fine? I think this will be fine. Right there in the live well, baby. Oh, oh, is that a fish? Yeah. I thought you got snagged, man. Oh my God. David just killing it today. Look at that thing. What is that? That's a cab, dude. No, no, that's a, cab, that's a ling. That's a, a really wide ling, bro. It's not that long though, huh? Wow, he's got a huge head, but he's not that long, like you said. Careful, man. Oh, 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 oh. All right, all right, all right. Look at those head spins, dude. Dude, that's a good one. He's not that long, but he's fat dude, as hell. He his head's bigger than the first one. Woo! How heavy that one. Nice, dude. Seven about pounder. the same. Yeah, yeah, about the same. Six, seven, maybe. Damn, dude. Oh. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. There he goes. Bro, that freaking bit like a. Oh, I got one. Yeah! Little, little cabbie. Dude, these cabazon get as big as the link cod David just caught. See you later, cabbie. You don't see it? Dude, it's gotta be in here somewhere. No, he's not in here. He's not, is he? But how would he have gotten out? Look how shallow it is. I bet he swam out, man. Just like a freaking salmon up river. Just darn um, it. Yeah. Oh yeah! There we go. Man, I'm just here catching these small fish, man. Another black. Nice, dude. That's a good one. Another nice good Ooh, one. That's a bigger one. Yeah, that's a good one. That's like a pound and a half. Two pound. Half pound and a half, probably. Oh man. David out here catching these huge ling cod. Caught another ten pounder, eight pounder, whatever that was. And I'm stuck here catching these blacks, man. But I like to eat these more, honestly. At least I'll tell myself that. It's a nice fish. That's a nice one. Black rockfish, got a big mouth. Basically a saltwater bass. Caught him on a Texas rig. If you do a lot of freshwater fishing, then you can come out here to the ocean, use your bass gear, and you get some fish like this. Join your buddy in here. In the live well. Two nice, nice black rockfish. I'm getting ready to cook that fish, but before I do, I want to catch one more black. The limit is three blacks per person. I need some fish in my cooler, in my freezer. That's what I'm using now. Change it up, still a Kitek, but this one's a little bit softer plastic, so any bites should be able to hook them easy. That's the spot, gonna get them. Ooh! What's this? Another black, big black, whatever this is. Come on, baby. Yeah. 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 Sw it. Swimming around here, swimming towards me. Look at this thing. Woo! Yeah! Oh. <laughs> Bro! Oh my god! Careful, careful, careful. Look at that. That's a straight tank. Oh, dude, what the yeah. hell? Dude, that could be a freaking. Nice work, bro. bro That's that... your PB from shore right there. Yeah, that could be a PB, PB black, bro. Like a state record, you think? Man, that thing's at least five pounds for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bro, look at that. Oh my God. <laughs> bro, look at this. Look at this thing. Oh my you God. see that? Holy moly. 
Dude, that thing is at least 22 inches, right? Is that 22, you think? Yeah, that's, that's Lingcott that's size. That's Lingcott size right there. <laughs> Look at that thing. Are you kidding me? Oh my God, that's the biggest well, black well, rockfish I've ever seen. Well, what? That's insane. <laughs> Dude, look at this thing. Not even holding it out at all. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, what the hell? Dude, he's he he's healthy too. That's insane. Oh my gosh. Dude, yeah. how all right, how 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 long do you think he is? Come on, dude. A solid 20. Solid dub. 20 inch God. black rockfish. Five pound two ounces. Yeah. Five pound, two ounce black rockfish. Dude, look at bomber. that thing. Oh my god. Straight goodness. bomber. That's insane. I'm gonna put him in the cooler. I mean, in the live well. <laughs> so these look tiny. Look at those little toddlers in child care. Yeah, these look tiny. You got the boss over here. Those are actually good size though. I wonder how long it takes to get that big. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, how long does it take for something to grow that big? Oh my goodness. A couple years, like four years, ten years. I don't have any clue. Do you even have a clue? I have no idea. Anybody, you guys know how long would it take a black rockfish to grow this size? Like, look at that thing. Oh my god. Can't even believe it. Yeah! He's not happy. All right, y'all, I got two small black rockfish. This is what we're going to be eating today. David's going to take the big lingcod home. I'm going to take the big black rockfish home. So. Oh man, still alive. I'm gonna go bleed these guys and I'll be right back. You know, if you were gonna go clean some fish or go buy some fish, this is exactly how they would do it, except they would be indoors. Just another way to fillet it. You can cut through the pin bones and just go right over the rib cage. Then you don't puncture the guts at all. Still got a really nice fillet. I got some charcoal here and before I even start prepping up the rest of the ingredients I'm just going to get this lit up because it's going to take a while to light. These are supposed to be instant light charcoal briquettes but they've been sitting out for about six months so all that lighter fluid that was infused in them kind of gets evaporated away so you got to watch out for those. Make sure they're sealed well if you have this type of brand. Life is good. Don't have a rag. Going home, gonna wash your clothes, why not use your pant leg? Gonna prep everything else right now while the charcoal heats. Got four fish fillets, got some scallion, garlic, ginger, and a shallot. Not scallots, that's not a scallion. Also got lemongrass and some scallions. Do have some scallions, there they are. So right now I'm gonna cut up this shallot and whatever this is, another shallot? I don't even know. But it's kind of like a baby onion, I guess. I'm just dicing up this scallion. I mean, as you can tell by my cutting technique, I don't know what in the world I'm doing in the kitchen. Usually this ain't my job. But there comes a time in every man's life where he must learn to cook for himself or shit, he should starve. And now is not the time, but I don't know, I just want to do it. Let's get this shallot. Or what is this thing? This is like a long, thin one of whatever I just cut up. Isn't it cool how onions are formed too? It's like layer upon layer. Just nature is just wild. Just gonna do it like this. One, two, three, four, five, and six. I'm gonna cut right down here in the middle one time. Right there like that. And now they should all dice up nicely just like that. Y'all look at that, look at that. Hey man, learn something from me today, huh? Look at that. Yeah, baby. All right, cool. In my opinion, the way to cook onions, let's get some oil in here first. That's avocado oil. It's gonna heat up right on there. And it takes a long time for onions to cook down. So there are my onions. And I'm gonna put it in here and I'm just gonna let it, let it cook. I want them to get like kind of brown. After they get brown, then I'm gonna throw in the garlic, and the ginger, and infuse that with some salt and pepper Throw in some scallions after on top of the fish. Hey man, we're cooking. We are cooking. All right, mincing up that garlic there. Do one more. How's these guys coming along? Uh, browning up a little bit. You want to prep a leaf? I'll prep a leaf. Thank you. 
prepping the ginger, getting it nice and thin. I think this one will do, it's just for the flavor, you know. All right, onions looking good. Right there, baby. Ooh, that smells great. Yeah, now let's throw in the garlic. Let that cook up. I don't think enough people cook their onions down enough, so that's what I'm doing here. I'm just making, cooking it all the way down. I'm gonna throw in the rest of the stuff, ginger and lemongrass. Two fillets per wrap. Salt and pepper right here also. Just, let's get some flavor on that. Now for the fish, I think I'll do the same. Just salt and pepper each side a little bit. Just prepping the fish into bite-sized pieces so as much of the fish, there's more surface area and the fish can get coated in this oil. Yeah, this is pretty much ready to go. And we're gonna pour this over the fish here. Where are the leaves at? You got, you got them? Yep. So how does this work? The leaves. This was David's idea. I'm just, my little spin on it was cooking everything in the pan, trying to infuse this oil with the flavor. So basically, we're gonna be steaming the fish. Oh, before you say that, sorry. Yeah. One, one thing I wanna say is that <laughs> a lot of people probably aren't even aware at all that banana leaves exist. Like most people, if they're gonna cook fish like this, they'll cook them in aluminum foil. And we've all heard that people can get Alzheimer's or whatever. You've heard that, right? Cooking in aluminum foil. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I've heard that, you know? Yeah. So who knows if it's true? If it's true, if it's not true, why risk it? You know, there's another option. You could cook with a banana leaf. Same thing, basically. Anyway, okay, sorry to cut yeah, you off. Yeah, I'm trying to mimic um, a northern Thai dish that, uh, that infuses uh, the ginger, the lemongrass, the garlic. Um, but we don't, we don't unfortunately have a, a mortar and, and uh, stuff like that to grind it up and make a proper psalm ball. So we're winging it. All right, so what do we gotta do? Just put the fish in one? Yeah, we got the bite-sized cubes. Like right little, in the middle. Little mound right there. We got the fish here, double this wrapped is, in a banana leaf. This is ready to go. The bring of fire sauce is ready to go. That might burn your hand. Yeah, though. let's let it cool down for a sec. Let's, would, let's get the other banana leaf ready. Let's put some fish on I here while this it. cools. And this is my little own special seasoning from Trader Joe's. No, Dude, you. that's the that's tr the traditional sambal that I love and adore so much that I was introduced to in Bali. That that, that the, the color, nice. Yep, there oh, we yeah. go. Oh yeah. I hope this doesn't burn me. But a little olive, avocado oil, onion, ginger, oh, scallions. Third, we don't need third degree burns. I, I trust this banana leaf. Fold it over on top like that. One time over like a square. Okay. Oh yeah, look at that. Um, and then just sketch. straight through, perfect, perfect. Oh, One. perfect. And David soaked these skewers in water overnight just so, uh, you know, so they won't, don't burn. Less chance for them to burn. Perfect, dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I th still think this is gonna be great, man. I think so too. With the Can oil. We, yeah. What's up? Can we mix it up a little bit? All right, look at that. Oh yeah, I think this one's sealed up even better. No okay. holes at all. Oh, all right, and on to the flame they go. All right, bro, you wanna you wanna open it up? Yeah, let's let's do it. The reveal. Really, not even cooked that long because the flame was so hot. But look at that oil. Look at those juices. And there it is. Looks like how it went in, but oh, I bet it's delicious, dude. Oh, man. Let's see how that chili sauce looks in here. I got a big smile on my face right now. Ooh. Oh, look at that. That's oh, perfect. Man. Yeah. Woo. Yeah, you got to give me a piece of that <laughs> one, dude. Heck yeah. Oh, I miss the chilies. Nice, bro. Nice. Let's do this, man. Good day today. Good day, my friend. Yeah. Good day. All right. Oh. It's about to get even better. Oh, man. Right there. Oh, Only thing missing boy. is a little avocado. Probably don't even need it, though. Oh, boy. All right, man. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers, my friend. Mmm. Yeah, lemongrass. Are you kidding me? If you had this with some bread, I bet sourdough bread would go well with this. Mixture over what the you top need with is the some juices. Sticky rice. Yes. To sop up all yes, that oil. Yes, exactly. Or some rice, exactly. But look at that. It's just cooked perfectly. Onions were cooked first. Ooh, that lemongrass is so good. Yeah, it adds a just a nice fresh bite to it. Yeah, nice citrus. Well, I'm going salmon fishing tomorrow, trying to get to the last one of the year. Season closes October 31st over here in Northern California. Going out with crispy fish. 
a lot of you guys might know him. You know, if you're like like 15, 16 or something, and you know you're just starting to learn how to cook and stuff, come home with a banana leaf. Easy. Yeah, it's easy. Surprise your parents. Show them a banana leaf. Oh. Like well, they'll go, "What is what is this?" And just cook this up. Yeah, you saw what he did. Piece of cake. Prep time was 10 minutes. Yep. You get these banana leaves at any Asian market. They're cheap. Ooh. What'd you get? Like 10 of them for a couple bucks. Yeah. Hmm. Way healthier than you know. Aluminum foil. Aluminum foil. That far exceeded my expectations. I mean, I knew it'd be good, but I didn't. I didn't think it would be that next level. In the trash. No cleanup either. No yeah. plates. Yeah. Done. Yep. That was. That was solid, dude. All right. Dude, let's get cleaned up and let's, let's get go. out of here. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. Solid day.